A student asked me to talk about how to classify industries into the categories oligopoly or monopolistic competition. And to do that, I've set up a few different industries that we're going to classify. And I've put up this spectrum to remind us that um, industries lie somewhere on the spectrum from monopoly, where there's one firm with lots of power, to perfect competition, which is what we've studied all semester long, where there's lots of um, firms and there's free entry and exit, and they all create identical products. And we've talked about how these are the most theoretical of the, indus uh, of the different industry types. Um, most industries fall more in the middle. They, there's a little bit of product differentiation, so there's monopolistic competition, and or there's a few different firms that are all really powerful, which is an oligopoly. Um, and it's not like firms always fall neatly into one or another, and it's definitely not like all oligopolies are the same or all monopolistic competition industries are the same. But we can still um, think about them using the, the classic economics structure of thought. So how do we do that? Well, the first step is always going to be to ask yourself how many firms. Um, the number of firms is a big indicator as to what type of industry it is. And of course, if there's only one firm, we know it's an oligopoly. Um, if there's lots of firms, it's either going to be monopolistic competition or perfect competition, and that just depends on is there differences across products. So fudge um, I think there's differences in fudge shops. Some fudge shops have lots of different flavors that they offer. Some fudge shops have better quality fudge. Some have a special secret recipe. Um, so there's product differentiation for fudge shops, but there's lots of different places you can buy fudge. So that's going to fall into the monopolistic competition category. Um, cola. So if we think about the cola industry, Immediately, we think Coke and Pepsi. And any time in an industry you can name the top firms on a single hand, or maybe even two hands, if you can name those firms, and if those firms seem to be um, strategically watching each other's decisions and advertising against one another, there's a good chance it might be an oligopoly firm. And if it is an oligopoly firm, or if there are only a few firms, we need to ask ourselves, what are the barriers to entry? Um, because that's one of the main differences between oligopoly and monopolistic competition is that there's some sort of barriers to new firms entering an oligopoly. So if there's only a few firms, we need to think as our next step about what those barriers might be. And with Cola, um, Coke and Pepsi have these huge advertising campaigns. And actually, advertising in the image of the product is actually a big part of the consumer's value for that product. So um, when you drink a Coke, you're kind of imagining, or, or somewhere in the back of your mind, you have all of these images of the advertisements you've seen of Coke. And it somehow represents this American thing to do, drinking a Coke. And the creation of that image, which is really a big part of the product they're selling, was a very expensive creation that took a lot of advertising. So the barrier to entry in this industry is actually going to be advertising itself. Um, if you want to be a new cola competitor, you're going to have to brand yourself by engaging in this big marketing campaign that small startup firms usually can't do. So this is going to be an oligopoly, and, and this was monopolistic competition. Um, and these are really the main two steps you're going to go through, is how many firms are there, and if there's only a few firms, what are the barriers to entry? Because sometimes you have industries where there might be a few big firms, um, McDonald's and Hardee's are, are definitely big firms, but there's also a lot of competitors. Same thing with coffee. Coffee is considered to be a monopolistically competitive industry, even though there's these big players, Starbucks and Caribou. And so um, thinking about what are the barriers to entry, even though there's Starbucks and Caribou and those are big firms, there's still not a lot of barriers to new firms entering, which means it's going to be monopolistic competition. And really these two, these two things can pretty much categorize everything into one of these two categories if we know it's not on the end. So how about hair salons? Well, of course, you know lots of different hair salons. You definitely can't name the top five hair salons on one hand. Um, and of course, there is product differentiation, so it's still monopolistic competition. 
Um, college is in a mid-sized town. Now, the, the mid-sized town part of this actually makes a pretty big difference, because if we think um, colleges, is that an oligopoly or monopolistic competition, we might classify colleges overall in the monopolistic competition um, category, especially now that online colleges are easier and easier to begin. But if you look at a small town like Northfield, where you have these two colleges, Carleton and St. Olaf, um, it's very unlikely that a new firm can easily enter the college market in, in Northfield or in, in a small mid-sized town. Let's say it's a town where um, most people stay in town for college and most people still want a brick and mortar college. Starting up a new college has, has um, very big barriers to entry. So you can probably name the colleges in a mid-sized town on one hand. And there are barriers to entry in terms of building buildings and hiring faculty and building that reputation. So this one's actually going to be an oligopoly. Hotels. Now this is another one that's a little bit tricky because you can think of lots of different actual hotels. But there's only a few chains. You've got like Hilton and Marriott, and these chains are ones that compete um, intensely. And that's another characteristic of oligopoly, is that in oligopolies, the firms watch one another and their, their marketing strategy and their position in the market, including how much they invest in new technologies and changes, depends heavily on their competitors. So it's a very strategic decision back and forth but among the firms in an oligopoly. And we notice that kind of strategic stuff going on in the hotel industry between Hilton and Marriott. So that's probably going to be better classified as an oligopoly. Um, so I'm going to add this extra strategy. If there's strategy and advertising, and heavy advertising, that might be an indication that it's an oligopoly. Um, gas stations can also be classified as monopolistic competition, although there are a few big ones. There's Shell and there's Chevron, and everybody knows those names. So this is another one that doesn't necessarily nicely fit in between them. But of course, if we think about are there barriers to entry, why does Shell have such a big part of the market share? Um, you might imagine they could they have negotiating power, and negotiating power can can um, turn something into a, more of a natural monopoly type of oligopoly. So this one really is partway in between. I'm gonna I'm gonna ca categorize that as both actually. Um, and airlines, this one's pretty easy. Now, the number of airlines probably exceeds your number of hands, but there's definitely, you can definitely name the big ones, and there's definitely huge barriers to entry. The fact that the number of, um, the number of airports and the number of places where each plane can dock at each airport is limited, that's a scarce resource that's not easily changed. So this is definitely an oligopoly industry. So this is another example of one where the number of firms was less than 10. We couldn't fit it on both of our hands. But there were big firms we could identify, and we could definitely identify barriers to entry, and probably also some strategy um, considerations for, for airlines. So monopolistic competition versus oligopoly, um, that, was, that was a summary.